stop admiring my body. Start admiring my pack. <laughs> all right. Hey, what's up, guys? So now we're gonna get into my pack. All right. My it's not actually an Alice pack, but my Alice pack. We're gonna be looking at what's going on with it. What do I pack every time we go out on a three-day patrol? Uh, there's gonna be kind of a lot in here, but it actually condenses into kind of a little. So let's get into it. All right. So the pack itself is a. Gordura fabric. I don't know. I'm not a gear nerd. So I buy I bought this thing on Instagram Actually, they convinced me they sold me and I've been using it ever since I am actually looking to kind of upgrade the pack because this one um, If you're going in and dealing with inclement weather, right? You need to pack more So it is a little bit small, but I've actually used this for winter training during winter forge and Two semesters now with one shepherd and it works pretty well. It's Kind of a modified, like updated Alice pack type deal. You can see it's got some Molly on the side. So it's kind of a modernized version of an Alice pack. Not bad. So the first thing you'll see here is uh, <clears throat> my bedroll, right? My sleeping pad. Uh, I like this sleeping pad, 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 because it's inflatable, right? So you can twist it and then it inflates and it actually doesn't really make any noise until you're deflating it, but you don't have to deflate it. You can just roll it stuff it and go, which is also nice, which I do a lot. So I keep that on the side here. You really want a sleeping pad. I've met a couple of guys who going out the last time it was getting below freezing every night. Okay. So sleeping out in just a sleeping bag and a mat sucks uh, when it's below freezing, when it's cold at all, it really just sucks. You got to pack more. So that's why you can see here, I've got a little bit more than I usually would take with me. Unfortunately, that's just the way the game goes. So a sleeping pad is essential, okay? Because why? Comfort? No. Does it add a little bit of extra comfort? Yes. Uh, is it for comfort? No, absolutely not. It's to um, make sure that you stay warm because the ground, when it gets cold, sucks heat out of you, okay? Even when it's like summertime, the ground can still suck heat from your body. So that's why we carry a sleeping pad so that you don't just drain all of your energy and all of your warmth into the ground. It will literally suck you dry like a woman can. So we need to carry a sleeping pad. Um, the next thing that you might notice is these clips on here, right? These carabiners. Now I do need to update it. Um, these are a little bit orange for my taste, so I should probably get black ones, or paint them green, or I'll probably end up just spray painting them green to be honest. But uh, these things are for like an extra sleeping bag. If I need to take a nice three layer sleeping bag. The thing is like this big. I'm not gonna try to stuff it in here. It would literally take the whole bag and probably not even fit still, right? So I will um, go ahead and just clip it on here and let it hang like that, all right? Let it hang like my nuts. So I'm gonna just let it hang. That's what the clips are for. I have some up here and then some down here as well uh, if I need to hang something else. So uh, How many that's do you the have? Pack. What's that? How many carabiners? I have two big ones and two littler ones on the bottom. And they've worked out pretty nicely, actually. And it's actually, it balances. Uh, so the important thing about like packing your pack is you want it to hang on your shoulders mm -hmm. and not like swoosh all over the place. So weight distribution. Weight distribution is really important. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well put. And I've seen guys not distribute their weight in their packs. Uh -huh. And they fucking get really tired and like give up. And mm. if you're giving up, you're a <laughs> All right, I'll have, to, I'll have to bleep that word. Okay, thank you're you. A pussy, if you actually go ahead and give up, never give up. So mm. pack your shit right, and mm. we'll go over that. So the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and put in is my sleeping bag, all right? This is gonna usually go at the bottom because chances are if I'm bedding down for the night, mm. we've already established security. We've already set up our patrol base. We have things enough under control that I can dig through my bag and go ahead and get shit out, right? So this sleeping bag is a snug pack. Uh, special forces number two. The comfort is um, down to 18 degrees Fahrenheit or actually down to 10 degrees uh, Fahrenheit would be the low, right? So you can survive in this down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, 12 degrees Celsius. Is that right? Yeah, I guess it is. Do I love this thing? No, because the reason being is I'm a little bit tall for it. So um, it's got a hood that you can put over you, almost like a, like a bivy bag, right? But the whole time I was out there, the hood wouldn't really, it would go and then uh, my shoulders would be sticking out the whole time. So if you're a tall guy, um, get something else besides this. I can't recommend it. Like in the summer, it's great, right? You like put it on, you kind of curl up, especially if you have like a wooly blanket or in my case, I always carry a bivy bag with me. 
fine. But during the winter, um, you're gonna be cold if you're over like 5'9", all right? So I really have to caution you guys about that. I actually did a review on e um, Amazon where I bought this thing because yeah, I bought it. I was like a three season warrior, right? And then I'm going up to a four season warrior. So winter, fall, spring, and summer. And I'm finding that this actually is, is lacking, all right? So it's great. It really condenses down, especially when you're able to really cinch up the, the um, compression sack and everything. But uh, there is that you need to make sure, guys, that you're testing out your gear that you carry because it will literally save your life. So in our case, we were down below freezing and if it got even colder, you know, it, it can, I, I saw someone this past semester, I won't mention their name, but they almost caught hypothermia while they were sleeping because they didn't have the right shit. Uh, and that will kill you and it makes your unit less combat effective. So that goes in the bottom. I will be looking to upgrade this at some point, but these things are fucking expensive, so that will have to come when it comes. Um, the next thing that's probably gonna go in the bag itself is my um, Gore-Tex, all right? So why do I put the Gore-Tex next is because I don't really have much else going down in here. The only thing that I might put below the Gore-Tex is my warming layers, all right? So unfortunately this time I had already packed up and put into storage my waffle top and my silkies, all right? Your under layer and your mid layer, your base layer and your mid layer are very important. So um, we can talk more about that as far as how to operate in the cold weather, but suffice to say, generally you, unless you're operating in the, the desert, you know, in the summertime where it's like 120, then obviously you don't need it. But I'm personally gonna be taking a base layer and a warming layer with me whenever I do One Shepherd or anything, um, you know, patrol related from now on. But in this case, I had to literally go out and buy a pair of fucking sweatpants and like a little light sweatshirt. But I use these as my base layer. Uh, they worked, but I will be going back to the military issue, you know, base layer, waffle top and bottom at some point. I would put these in a garbage bag, black garbage bag, and I would literally put them down in here after the sleeping bag, all right? To Reason keep it dry? To keep it dry, exactly. Because, yeah, this pack is water resistant. Is it waterproof? No. So I do have, and we'll see when I break out my big gear bag, a pack cover, an OD green pack cover that I will put on here, especially if I think it's going to rain. Obviously, looking at the weather report ahead of your operation is part of your mission briefing, and it's really an essential part of you know going out and patrolling and being tactical, right? You have to look at, it's one of the most important things, actually, the weather. But um, you know, if I knew it was gonna rain or go ahead and, and be inclement weather, then um, I'd probably put the pack cover on. But anyway, we're digressing here. I will go ahead Take a garbage bag, I'll put in my base layers, I'll put in two extra pairs of wool socks, or in this case, synthetic socks, because it's better than wool, and um, skivvies, all right? An extra pair of skivvies, very important. And then sometimes I'll go ahead and pack like an extra pair of pants, or maybe even, maybe even a whole new, whole second serviceable uniform, because getting soaking wet in the monsoon, and like being wet to the bone, and having to be wet to the bone for three days sucks, all right? So if you can go ahead and take a whole new serviceable uniform and put it on before you get in your bag at night, even though you're only gonna get like two, three hours of sleep, it doesn't matter, it makes your morale like you feel like a king. I, that's happened to me before, me and my boy Santiago, we were out caught in a monsoon, it literally flooded up until here in our fighting position. And uh, we asked ourselves at one point, why are we even like trying to wear our ponchos? We're literally in a flood. but. That night, we took refuge in a old fucking shell, uh, like burnt out barn, right? Because there was lightning all over the place. So we went in there. I, I discovered that I had a whole new uniform in, on in my bag. I put that thing on, crawled into my bag. It was amazing. I can't even describe still the feeling that I got from that. It was really amazing, especially while everyone else was cold and soaking wet still. So if you got room, a new uniform. Um, in your waterproof bag or garbage bag is great. And I'll usually put another garbage bag inside that just so I have, you know, one is none, two is one, right? Now on top of that, I'm gonna have my Gore-Tex. Now speaking about getting rained on, speaking about getting wet, this will also help protect a little bit against the wind and the cold. So going out there, guys, this isn't like, a lot of people don't understand that doing like recce shit and recon and doing patrols is not like sitting in a nice comfortable fob 
and then going out for a couple of hours, hitting a house and coming back, right? Like, it's not like that. It's not like doing executive protection work where you're in a nice suit and you might get rained on, but then you could sit in your car and like living in luxury. This is not luxury. This is being outside in the elements for days on end, all right? And if you're really doing this for real, perhaps weeks on end, right? You might go out for a week, but discover you, you get retasked and do another thing and you might stay out for longer than you thought, right? Especially if you have the luxury of resupply or whatever. So Gore-Tex is essential. Um, I have a multi, uh, not multi-cam, what is this? Woodland uh, Gore-Tex and for one shepherd, we either do OD or Woodland. So I have to have a set of OD as well as Woodland. Uh, that's just part of the unfortunate part of one shepherd. You do have to invest in this, but you're making the investment in yourself really. So I've got my uh, top or my bottoms and my top as well. And uh, this will go over my uniform and uh, keep me nice and dry and hopefully nice and warm as well. And that will go more on the top so that if it does start pissing down on us, I can just get it out real quick, throw it on, then throw my gear on and I'm nice and dry like a freaking king. Speaking about keeping dry, right? All right, so here is a bivy bag. Now, what is a bivy bag? Does it keep you warm a little bit? Does it help against the rain? Yeah, sure. Um, I was using this in combination with the snug pack and it really, really helped out, okay, against the cold. But it's more meant for the rain, okay? Keep the rain off you. Now, you can notice here it's nice and big, so a taller guy like me can go ahead and climb in it. Um, even a shorter girl like Jen, she'd be swimming in this thing, but... I'd be warm. You'd be, you'd be, you'd be dry. Dry, yeah. Um, and so if you notice, it co literally like will cover you completely. Mm. So you can like literally come in here like a tent almost, wow. right? And you can get like um, poles, like a collapsible pole to keep it up, but usually guys just use it like this. Mm. And this thing will save your life. You know, I've been out there, um, when you go out for a day and then you don't expect it to rain, it starts pissing down on you and you have this, and you get in it and it's amazing, right? And somebody who didn't bring a bivy bag is just getting all soaking wet. Mm. And they can't sleep, it's miserable, and this thing is essential, all right? In my personal opinion, this thing is absolutely mission essential. So that's going to go um, on the other side here. So I'll have my sleeping pad and I'll have my bivy bag uh, in here. And sometimes what I'll actually do, and this time when I was out I did this, is I'll roll inside of this a whoopee, right? Mm -hmm. And a whoopee is essentially just a poncho liner, mm -hmm. and you'll put that in that, roll it up, and make like a nice little ranger roll type thing, and then stick it in this. I've heard guys say, hey, I don't need a sleeping pad because I got my ranger roll, right? And I saw a guy on YouTube do a ranger roll, and he was sleeping in the snow, he was fine. Well, what they don't tell you, or what that guy probably didn't tell you is that, you know, he wasn't sleeping in the snow for days on mm -hmm. end, right? You carry a damn sleeping pad, you'll be glad you did. Um, don't just go out there with a ranger roll, it's foolish. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and have a poncho. Do I always carry a poncho? These days, I do, I never used to. But the reason I always carry a poncho is kind of two or three fold. Number one, uh, you can go ahead and rig up a makeshift shelter with this, right? It does two things, it keeps the elements off you, but it also for prying eyes of a drone. Now these days, um, even at One Shepherd, we're using drones, right? So if you think that we're out there doing this shit using drones, yeah, the enemy is going to be using drones 100%. Now, they might not be like a predator drone or whatever. They might just be a little DJI drone, right? When well, you're seeing this in Ukraine, you saw this in Azerbaijan. Um, the nice thing about is if your enemy is not like uh, a nation state or whatever, and they don't have access to those actual, you know, like high tech drones, the DJI drones and shit, if you rig up a nice shelter, it might confuse it, right? They might not actually see you. So that's essential. Um, camouflaging and improving your fighting position is just what we do, right? All of you guys who are in the military know, you start with a little like, you know, couple of inch deep grave, right? Like a ranger, what do they call it? Like a ranger hole or something like that. And then you keep improving your fighting position as time goes on. Every time you get the chance, you improve your fighting position. And part of that, these days it's really essential to camouflage yourself from drones and from prying eyes in the sky, preserve your civil liberties, right? So, and then also this will keep you um, dry and warm kind of a little bit at the same time. So very essential. Now, what's next? Uh, you can see on the top here, it's got this nice pocket, right? What do I put in here? Well, I put in here all the shit that I really want to get like without going through my bag. For example, 
magazines. And yeah, guys, I have to return this. This is a One Shepherd issue mag. I just found it in my pack as I was unpacking it. So I will be bringing it to the next semester. Don't kill me. Um, but all of my magazines that don't fit in my battle rattle will be going up in here. So if I do have extra mags, they will be going up in here so I can access them immediately if I don't put them in my butt pack. So next, I'm gonna put an MRE, okay? I'll usually put, I usually get issued about three or four MREs, okay, for the three days. Uh, those will go in the, in the pack. One will go in my butt pack, two will go in here, and then the other I'll keep in here, all right? So I can access it immediately without having to unclip it, dig through it, uh, because, you know, if you've got 10 minutes to go ahead and eat your MRE in between security rotations or, or whatever you're doing, right, or in between patrols, then you want to get it quickly. And we usually field strip it, okay? So we'll take it out of the bag and then put a little electrical tape um, onto this. Don't use duct tape because when you try to get it off, uh, 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 and you've got to cut it, and then sometimes you cut your MRE, so use electrical tape if you can, just pro tip. But I will definitely uh, go ahead and put a field strip MRE in here. And guys, we're gonna be filming Jen eating her first MRE, and I'm gonna make her eat it cold. Oh, Stand beam. by for that, it's gonna be pretty funny. Oh my God. Now, um, the next couple of things that I'm gonna put in is, uh, I usually don't take my cell phone with me when I do this shit. Now, that's two, twofold again, right, reasons. Number one, um, security, OPSEC, operational security. They can fucking track your phone, right? So leave it back at the fob. Um, even in this case, they had an ELINT element, the enemy, uh, enemy force had an ELINT element, electronics intelligence, right? So they were doing some crazy shit that that's just the civilian side of things. So if they can do that kind of shit. They weren't fucking with the phones at all, but they were do, doing, I can't, I can't even say it. They were doing some things with the radio that were just crazy, listening in and all that. So really, seriously guys, um, if you're actually going out and doing something for real, try not to take your fucking phone with you. It would just be foolish. And another reason is I don't want it to get broken or get lost or anything, but um, this time I did take my phone just because I had things going on at home that they needed to check in on. So I did take a, a battery pack. Now, even if you're not taking your phone with you, having a battery pack like this is great to charge other electronic devices that you or your squad might have on you and need to be charged. I did run into, I forget what it was, but a mission essential piece of equipment needed to be charged. Luckily, I had one of these and we were able to charge it. So that's another thing that's gonna go on the top and I always put this in a plastic bag as well so it doesn't get wet. Uh, now moving on, uh, I do have inside in here some other things that I will need. For example, I'm a fiend for this shit, so I keep my Zin pouches, right? My nicotine, I wanna have that and I always carry one extra one um, on my butt pack. So I'll put those in here because if I'm going through it, chances are I'm like, I don't, I'm not fighting or anything like that. I got a minute, I can take a quick dip and like enjoy myself. Uh, I will also carry, I don't always carry this guys, but in this case, I did carry a little uh, dragon stove, all right? And I carry two extra fuel tabs. Why do I carry this? As I was talking about on the live stream last night, uh, it really is essential to hydrate out in the field. But when it's cold, you really don't wanna hydrate. You just like, your body doesn't feel like it needs it, but it needs it. So going ahead and cooking yourself up some nice liquids, whether it's cider, whether it's cocoa, whether it's uh, or hot chocolate, as I call it, um, or, you know, coffee even, right? But getting those liquids in you and keeping warm and nice and warm is, is really a, an essential thing to do when it's cold. So I did carry this. I actually didn't use it the whole time I was out there because I was a squad leader and I didn't have time. But um, if I really felt, you know, hypothermic or like I was cramping up at night, which, you know, happens, I would make myself drink some, either some broth or some cider or whatever from my nice hot dragon stove. Um, typically we don't eat our MREs hot, I don't at least, but you do have the option um, of an MRE heater. It's hit or miss whether these things work. So having the option to heat, you know, various things with a dragon stove is good as well. Uh, next, I will have a small container of DEET. Oh. I always treat my uniform with uh, permethazone, right? I think it's, mm -hmm. I always want to say permethazine, but I think that's the stuff that you smoke. Oh. <laughs> Charms or whatever, right? The, the hood, they smoke that. But anyway, uh, I don't smoke this. <laughs> Just put this on your uniform and I do reapply it every now and then because ticks and shit like that, they'll, they'll fuck you up. So, Does it work? Uh, yeah, it, it works. It works enough, right? Mm. It's better than nothing. So mm. I keep a small bottle of that. 
Um, I sometimes will bring a small bottle of sunscreen as well. I didn't have it um, in here, but I, my nose got burnt, so maybe <laughs> I should have. Usually when you have the face paint on, it actually oh. works as kind of a, a makeshift sunscreen. Yeah. But I also put, um, I take a, a, what is this called? Mouthwash. Mouthwash, yeah. And a small toothpaste and toothbrush. Mm. Now, I've had guys say, I don't want to brush my teeth out there. It's only two or three days. Ugh. Ugh. Brush your teeth, guys. It really does make an improvement in your health and your morale. It, it, it helps. So, um, and actually, one of my buddies there, LT, we call him. He's a lieutenant in the army. He comes to One Shepherd and trains because, frankly, it's better training than he gets in the army. And he was saying that part of the process of establishing a patrol base and everything is hygiene, right? So you do everything by step. So you do this, then you establish security, then you hygiene, then you eat. All right, so hygiene is really an important part of, of doing things. Next. I'm gonna have, let me put all this shit, cause I gotta, guys, the reason I'm doing this is so I can pack back up and be ready for the next semester. Cause I travel a lot, as you guys know. So I always wanna be having this shit ready. What was I gonna show you guys? Yeah, all right, so here's a nice little um, kit. I keep my electrolytes, I keep some Motrin, especially if you've abused your body like me for like years and years and years. Motrin is mission essential. A lighter, some Tums, and uh, some gum, right? Oh, and also a, uh, uh, ace wrap and ace wrap is essential if you you know just lightly sprain your ankle or whatever like I've seen time and time and time and time again mm. um, to be able to give it some support and not do any further damage and still be able to carry on your mission very important so I always carry an ace wrap whether it's for me or one of my men all right um, next this will actually go um, last thing that I keep up in here last two things actually I keep a boo-boo kit, all right? So you'll see a lot of guys going out with their, um, gosh damn, with their uh, blowout kits or whatever you want to call it, your like tactical medicine kit for gunshot wounds. But this doesn't have band-aids or antiseptic, you know, wipes or um, antibiotic jelly in it. Like it doesn't have any of that stuff. What are you usually doing more of? Getting shot or getting cuts, right? Mm. You're getting cuts, especially at One Shepherd, you know, you're, you're crawling through the woods um yeah briars and prickly bushes and you're getting cuts all over the fucking place so um something that you'll learn prefer you learn it from me than learn it the hard way is that if you get cuts in the woods right from a prickly bush or whatever well like who who else frequents those bushes animals, animals. right so if they get cut and then this cuts you like you could get Disease. sepsis you could get diseases so immediately guys it's really important like don't laugh about it immediately treat it with some antibiotic jelly it really is very important so carrying a boo-boo kit you know you've got your butterfly closures this one even has antacids aspirin ibuprofen like all the shit that you really want in one little tiny kit and if you really want to be tactical you could spray paint it all right but <laughs> there's really no need for that so i carry that um in addition to my medical kit now another thing that i carry up in here is a white light okay very bright uh, white light is good for every now and again but when you're operating you don't really ever want to use a white light so i have and I put duct tape over it because the lens gets uh, gets lost. But this is a red light lens, okay? So you put this over your flashlight and it becomes a red light. You don't ever use white light when you're on a mission, when you're operating. The quickest way to get fucking seen, right? Like, obviously, what travels farther than sound? Light, right? I think, I think actually, what's his name? Grand Thumb mentioned that in his recce video, which was actually a great video. Um, Light travels farther than sound, so ask any professional soldier and they'll tell you fucking red light, all right? Or no light at all, even better, and nods. But if you're like me and you don't want to spend like $3,000 on a PBS 14 and you live in the city and you have literally no use for it besides that, like, get a red light, all right? Uh, next thing is going to go in the side pocket, so the front pouches, my shit kit, all right? Guys, a shit kit's essential. I was PC up. P, uh, PCIing my guys, right? PCI, pre-combat inspection. We make them do this. We li literally go through, make each man lay out every fucking thing that he's taking, not only in his battle rattle, but also in his pack to make sure that he has everything he needs. One thing that I saw a bunch of guys were lacking with, hand sanitizer. What, are you gonna go shit in the woods, wipe your ass, and then not sanitize your hands? Get away, you nasty fuck. I literally told them that. <laughs> and I made them put fucking hand sanitizer in all of their kits. Uh, nasty. All right, but I take real toilet paper. I take butt wipes, okay? Don't let yourself, like, just get swamp ass. It's gross. I take um, 
a shovel to bury the stuff with, right? You don't want to leave it out there unless you're setting an ambush, which that's what Jenny wants. <laughs> she knows the story. Maybe we'll tell it to you guys sometime. Yeah, that was me. Ha ha ha. And then I keep my hand sanitizer, okay? Very important. Don't like take a shit and then go eat breakfast without hand sanitizing your hands. You'll get sick, all right? And then you're combat ineffective and you're no use to me and I'll tell you you're a piece of shit. Um, so. And then I will carry for my men, all right, for my guys, an extra thing of wipes. Because this is one thing, like, God, hey, who has some wipes? Who has some wipes? What? <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. I told you to bring it, like, three times, but I know you're not going to, so I'm going to bring you one as well because I'm the squad or a fire team leader. That's my responsibility. And, again, One Shepherd is a leadership school, guys, so you realize, like, after a few semesters, what's something that nobody fucking carries with them? Let me carry it for them, even though I know, like, I don't need to. All right, and then the next thing, the canteen, you want at least a gallon of water uh, for yourself, okay? So you never step off with at least four canteens or some type of means to carry a gallon of water. Gallon of water per man per day is kind of the, or per, per day or per two days, I don't remember, but gallon of water per man per mission is kind of the thing, right? So, and that's the military standard, so that's what we use. I carry two on my side one here and I had another one but my friend discovered that I jacked his canteen from the previous semester so he took it back so I need to get a new canteen um, and then obviously I'll have um, up in here on the top pouch my red light headlamp all right you see all of the task cool guys like all the special forces guys they always got it right here um, but this is how we carry it right so you, you just carry it and you sleep with it on because if you get up in the middle of the night to take a watch or whatever uh, and you are allowed to use red light or you need to like look at your map real quick fumbling in here and trying to find your red light or like trying to dig it out or wherever it is in the pitch black at night guys it's not gonna happen so keep it right here and this is my red light thing so i keep my headlamp um, up in there as well and then on the side i have a pair of safety glasses all right these are actually really nice these are i think oakley or something like that they're like super super nice uh but these were essential especially for going around the woods at night all right you got branches are gonna fly in your face you got sticks are gonna fly in your face uh, not to mention the fact that when you're shooting, you should probably be wearing some type of eye protection. A very common injury is to have a shell casing fly in your eye and shit like that. And then obviously if you're using live rounds, shit's going to ricochet, shit's going to fucking fall and fly in your eyes, right? So uh, eye pro is important. And I also carry a cheap pair of um, sunglasses for the daytime as well. Um, and I carry the cheap shit because I always lose them. <laughs> Even my civilian everyday life, I, yes. I lose them. So she knows. Oh. Then last thing is um, zip ties to make hasty repairs or even just put up my shelter and things like that. Mm. I'll usually have a little paracord as well, but I keep that in my boat pack. And then um, my blowout kit, which I did have on my person, on my fighting kit, but the stupid thing, it's like attacked with something and then Velcro. Mm. So it had Velcro on it and then like a, a little safety thing. Luckily it had that because it would have fallen off. So. This is more for like sitting around in the air conditioning, being a SWAT team member and like living in luxury than going out and doing recce shit and, you know, recon and shit. Mm. So I will have to figure out a new way to put my blowout kit on my uh, Alice gear, but so I just put it in my pack. And I always leave room for a couple extra items that I might need to pick up from my buddy or whatever, you know, I always leave room in your back, all right? And you want it not to mention the fact that you want it light. If you're carrying all this shit, I've seen guys pack their shit with like, Folding, no lie, like folding chairs and <laughs> weird shit. And I'm like, what are you doing? And then they can't like, they can't make the patrol. All right. And if that's you, I hate you. I fucking hate you. All right. I fucking hate you. Um, so last thing is I'll usually, these are shears. Obviously we all know what these are, but um, I have these in place of usually I'll take garden shears. Hmm. Garden shears are really essential to trim down. Like in my case, I fucking am allergic to poison ivy, right? So if I'm bedding down for the night, if I still have some daylight, I'm gonna take those shears and cut out all the poison ivy in front of me. Um, I'm also gonna do the same thing with thorns and all of that. I'm gonna improve my fighting position, my sleeping position as much as possible. Um, but in this case, they're just shears. But shears are very important as well, especially if you are getting shot at, to cut away clothes and look at wounds. Guys, that was the pack. Um, we're gonna move on to the actual fighting kit next.